So, hello everybody and welcome to the third in our four-part webinar series designed to help clubs upskill and support them going for the BI club mark. For anyone who hasn't seen the other two that we've done already, they're already recorded and on our Basketball Ireland website under the club mark section. We did one on the use of social media and we did one on the um, play, building a player pathway within a club. And then our final one on Thursday will be uh, securing funding and sponsorship. So the Club Mark is a program designed by BI development officers to help ensure uh, clubs that they're following best practice and are sustainable. You can find more about the Club Mark by going onto our BI website and clicking on the Club Mark section along the banner, or you can email me, pcar at basketballireland.ae. Just a few housekeeping rules, so if everyone can please stay on mute. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can type them into the chat box. Um, and I'll ask them at the end. We have two speakers tonight, so we're going to go through the two presentations and then take all the questions at the end. At the end, if you want to ask a question directly, you can use the reactions button just to put up a little symbol in your screen like I'm doing here. And I'll ask you to unmute yourself and you can ask a question directly. Okay, so our first speaker today is Matthew Hall. Matt is our senior technical development officer or technical officer for Basketball Ireland. He has worked in various roles in Basketball Ireland since 2010 and is currently a member of the Elite Performance Committee where he runs the International Academy programs. He also serves as the chair of the newly formed Diversity Committee in Basketball Ireland. He oversaw the setup and running of the coach licensing system, which was launched in 2018 and is now mandatory within all Basketball Ireland events since August this year. So Matt's going to talk us through coach licensing. So I'll hand over to him now. Thanks, Paul. Uh, evening, everyone. I just get myself uh, set up here. Okay. Um, okay, so coach licensing, as Paul said, it's been around for about two years now, since 2018. And I suppose the first thing to say is there's no cost to it. It's not designed to make it difficult for anyone to coach. Um, the whole idea was it be, was currently we have two databases. So Sports Island hold a database for all qualified coaches that have done a, a Sports Island course, of which uh, all our courses are backed by, by Sports Island. So they hold a database of roughly around 6,000 coaches that have done qualifications through them. We have a database in Basketball Island that has all registered coaches. But all registered coach means is that when you register with Basketball Island, you've clicked your coach. Um, so you can effectively put up till now whatever level you want, and we have no way of cross-referencing. Cross so the whole idea of the coach licensing database and the system was to merge the two. Um, so the license scheme was established to make sure that we can tell the difference between active and non-active coaches. So like I said, the 6,000 coaches on the Sports Island database. And at the moment we have about 1,250 licensed coaches. So all the rest would be classed as non-active coaches, people who have done a Coach and Island course since uh, 1997, which is when their database started. So it's important that all clubs, schools and colleges know who's coaching their players and what qualifications they've had. So that's what Coach Licensing Scheme does. Everyone gets a card. So you can ask them for that card at any point and you can see what level of coach they are. Uh, coach Licensing allows tracking of coaches, continued professional development and help coaches to strive to improve their coaching standards by attending courses. So over the last 10, 15 years, especially, not many coaches have gone up through the various levels or, uh, and we've also found it very difficult to run clinics without too many people going to the clinics because there's been no real incentive for people to go and upskill themselves. Now, it's a natural progression at the moment. Coaches uh, are, are becoming much more qualified uh, with the world becoming so much smaller in terms of YouTube and so much more basketball coaching available online. Coaches are looking uh, for, for more knowledge all the time. So it's made it easier. It's kind of the perfect storm. It's the right time to put this licensing scheme in place and also to make sure that we're offering more clinics in order for people to upskill themselves through CPD. So currently, as Paul mentioned there, no coach can coach in a basketball island competition without a coaching license. 
So that doesn't mean to say that you can't coach within your club. Each club can have who they want coaching their their players. Um, obviously, they should be guard abetted and have their safeguarding if they're coaching within your club. But that's down to the clubs. But in order to coach in a competition uh, at any level and mark yourself down on the score sheet as a coach, you need to have a license from now on. There's been a two year lead up into this where we've been putting it in gradually. But from now on in, um, it should be well tracked at area board level, at national league level, and all other levels in between. The only time you wouldn't need a license is uh, full time school teachers or college people. So if you work for a, a, an education institution full on a full time basis and you coach a team within that, you don't actually need a coaching license. But if you've gone into one of those places to, to coach basketball, then you do. Um, in order to get a coach license, you also you have to have completed Sport Island certified basketball coaching course since 1997, as I mentioned. Uh, you have to hold current safeguarding one certificate or equivalent, and you must be guard abetted with Basketball Island. Okay, uh, where to find it on the website? Some people can find the website a little bit difficult at the moment, um, but on the main bar at the top, if you go to get involved, which is on the main task bar at the top, and then under develop, you'll see the coach licensing there. If you click on that, you, it will bring you down and give you all the information um, for coach licensing, what you need to know about it. And then in order to, to register to, to sign up, if you go to step three uh, and click that, you'll see the form there that you need to complete and attach a safeguarding and guard a vetting proof, um, along with a picture if you're level one or above. If you're intro level, you don't actually need a picture. It's not on, it's not on the license. Uh, you don't actually need to include your proof of coaching qualification. We go and check that directly on Sports Island's database. Uh, and if there's any issues with that, we'll come back to you. Um, if we can't find you or if there's, if there's a different level that you've applied for than you are on there, we'll come back to you. Um, just double check and, and clear that up for you. Okay, how long is a license valid and how do you renew? So the introduction to coaching license is for three years. The level one is three years. Level two is a four-year license and the level three is a five-year license. If at any point during that period, so for example, your level one during that three-year period, if you take the level two course, then you go up a level, we would reprint your license at that level and then your time period will start again. So if you did the level two course, you would restart and have four years from that date where you've uh, been certified by Coach and Island. Um, in order to keep your license and, re and renew it at the end of the three-year three, three year period, you need to have for, for intro, you need to have done 50 CPD points within that three year period. For level one, it's 100. For level two, it's 150. And for level three, it's 200 points within your five year period. So what happens if you don't renew your license uh, after the expiry date? So basically for intro level, after your three years is up, if you haven't completed your 50 points, then you have two years to complete it. Uh, uh, to get your 50 points rather. And if you haven't completed your 50 points within two years after the expiry of your license, then you have to retake the full introduction to coaching course. So if you complete your 50 points within the two years after your license, then your license will be renewed and go from there. But during the period, once your license expired, you're no longer a licensed coach until such time as you have your license renewed and a new one has been reprinted. Um, for level one, it's two years again after your expiry date but if you go outside the two years then you have to retake the level one course for level three it's a three-year grace period but then you have to take a minimum of two modules of the level two course but that will be on a case-by-case -case basis depending on how much coaching you've done in the previous five years so at, at that level you really need to have been coaching a lot and be able to show that on your cv that you've been active the whole time in order to uh, e even get that renewed and level three it's four years grace period, but you have to do two modules of a level two course. Okay. Uh, so how are CPD points awarded? So uh, you can collect CPD points by attending Basketball Island Sanction Clinics courses and the annual conference should we have one. We haven't had one for the last couple of years, but hopefully there will be one back this year. Um, for a conference, for example, that would, an all day conference would, would give 50 CPD points. Um, so really, if you turn up to the annual conference once in every three years as an intro coach, that would be all the CPD you needed to do. Obviously, we hope people do more and have a thirst for more knowledge, but it, it's the idea that it's supposed to be a minimum standard, not a tax against you. 
So BIHQ awards CPD points to sanction events depending on the number of criteria. So uh, anyone can apply if you're running an event, if you're running a clinic within your club or within your area and you have coaches coming in, you can apply, uh, apply to Basketball and HQ to myself or to a coaching courses uh, or coach education email. Um, you can apply for CPD points and sanction for that event. Um, we'll just ask you simply to tell us who's coaching on the event, what they're speaking about, how long the event is and, and what the level is aimed at. Um, and then we'll give you an, a certain amount of points for that event, uh, sanction it, and then you can advertise it as a Basque Island sanctioned event uh, with the amount of CP, CPD points attached. We'll also advertise it ourselves on our social media and website, um, should you wish. So clinics normally have between 10 and 40 points, depending on, as I said, length speakers and the level of the clinic. Conference, 50 points. Various local sports partnerships, partnership courses between 10 and 50 points, depending on the subject, length, um, and the, the, the period, uh, if they're, how, how much they're related to coaching. Um, but some other things, I mean, first aid, things like that, some of those can give CPD points, depending on who's running the course. You can request CPD points for other events through Basketball and HQ, but it very much uh, what depends on what the course is, if it's a recognized course, and also, uh, if it's related to basketball. So if you do an individual course with someone or if you're doing courses as a board, we don't normally give CPD points for that, but if it's a recognized course uh, within Ireland, even if it's run by a different governing body or something like that, if it's, it, if, it, if it's useful in relation to basketball, we will issue CPD points for it. Um, so minimum standards, which kind of have been introduced this year. Uh, so, you see at the top here, just those years. So as we go across, uh, the, the idea is that minimum standards is again, there's no minimum standard put in place that people can't build up to. So for example, if you take the EPC here, international coaches, they have to have level one at the moment to begin with, but it will go up to level two over the next two years. So level coach, level one coaches have a chance to complete their level two in the next six months year if they want to go up to be uh, a level two coach. Everything else is really at minimum standards. The NABC is introductory right across until you get above under 15. So that will go up to level one um, in 2021. Uh, MNCC, uh, National League men's and women's will go up to level one as well. But again, it's, it's not designed to make it too difficult for people. And it's perfectly acceptable for people to stay at the intro coaching level and just continue to educate them at that level. If that's the kind of level that they want to coach at um, the courses, for example, as you go up through the levels, they become more, uh, more, more difficult, but more difficult in who you're coaching and the standard of knowledge you have to coach. But if you're coaching juniors at the same time, the introduction to coaching course and CPD on top of that is more than enough to, um, to keep you up to date with things. So that's really it for now. Um, I'm sure there'll probably be some questions, but I'm gonna hand back to Paul here so that Roy can go through his and then we can discuss a few things later if there is questions on it. Thanks very much for that, Matt. Um, so Thanks just for, for people joining who, who might not know, we're gonna get all the questions at the end. You can type them into the chat box now if they're on your mind and I'll go back to them at the end or you'll get a chance to, to ask them. Um, at the end. So our next speaker is Rory Wall. Rory is the compliance officer for Basketball Ireland. He started Basketball Ireland in 2014 as the registration manager, during which time he started doing guard vetting for Basketball Ireland and upskilling in safeguarding and welfare. In March 2018, he became the national children's officer for Basketball Ireland and also added compliance to his role as they regularly interwine. So um, I'm going to hand it over to Rory now for his presentation. So whenever you're ready, Roy, you can share your screen and unmute yourself. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, thanks, Matt, and hello, everyone. Um, okay, so I'll just get this started here. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is actually, sorry, just go back to the start. So I'm just going to start off just the, the whole thing with, with welfare and in terms of the club mark that Paul is doing. 
um, you know, is, is just to kind of give you a broad kind of um, outlook on it here. It's such a, a large area to cover. So, I mean, you know, I'm not going to, a lot of it, the information is on our website and you can obviously, you know, come up with questions after. So I'm just going to give you a few broad points on it. And um, I'm just going to start here with some of the six, the six safe uh, principles of safeguarding that we um, that we should work off. Um, OK, so like one is empowerment, you know, so we'll just ensure that people are supported and confident in making their own decisions and giving informed consent. And the empowerment gives individuals the choice and control over decisions that are made. So we look at protection, so it's providing support and representation for those in the greatest need. And then the organizations can put measures in place to help stop abuse from occurring and offer help and support to those at risk. And that goes from basketball areas and all the way down to our area boards and into our clubs. And with prevention, it is crucial to try and take the action before the harm occurs. So preventing neglect, harm or abuse is the primary objective. Um, prevention is the act of organizations working to stop abuse before it happens. Raising awareness, training staff and making information easily available um, are all ways that they can demonstrate preventive measures and encouraging individuals uh, to ask for help. Um, proportionality. So we must take a proportionate and least inclusive response to the issue presented. Um, proportionality ensures that services take each person into account when dealing with abuse. They respect each individual and assess any risk presented. Partnerships, so forming partnerships with local committees and communities can create solutions as they can assist in preventing and deleting, detecting abuse. And partnerships give the organizations an opportunity to work together as well as the local community. And accountability, being accountable for the, having complete transparency in delivering safeguarding practices. And safeguarding, and this is probably the point that I would like to kind of make sure everyone kind of understands, safeguarding is for everyone's business and the accountability makes sure that everyone plays their part when it comes to safeguarding vulnerable people. Everyone is accountable for their actions as individuals, uh, services and organisations. I think a lot of time people kind of look at safeguarding as just uh, protecting children, but it's actually, it's make sure all of the policies and procedures are in place to safeguard everyone within your organisation. And we'd probably look at child protection being the term that is specific to, to um, looking after the children. So, um, some essentials that I would say that the club should have. Um, so all clubs that have underage members must have an appointed qualified child protection officer. Um, this isn't um, required if it's a senior club that have um, no children involved, um, but it, you have to have it if you have underage members. And so clubs must have, so the risk assessment completed and displayed on your website or club info pages. So just a little bit on the risk assessment at the moment, it's just by you know, paper form that we have, we have templates sent out and the clubs have that fill out. Going forward, it was meant to happen last year, but Sport Ireland are working on a club self-assessment audit framework and details will be furnished to all when we get it down from Sport Ireland. So this is going to be an online tool where I'll have the login for, for all of the clubs. Um, you can, you'll be, then you'll be able to log in, you create your own password to log in and you can do the risk assessment there and then I'll be able to check in and see and you know if you have any issues with certain parts and then you need to kind of um, you know update it from there on um, all that kind of stuff and obviously you know your child safety statement um, completed and made available um, on the website and club info pages as well and um, obviously with club, club mark as well you know having a good kind of safeguarding child protection policy and um, you know like again covers all your members and you know just make sure that you know you have all the um, the ethics parts covered and that your dispute resolution um, is there as well just so that everyone is is protected and they all have a say and then with the members obviously all of your members that are involved on a regular basis with children and vulnerable adults really must have valid guard vetting and appropriate training in safeguarding checks in place. So obviously the guard vetting at the moment, um, so when I took it over from uh, Deirdre Wolf, um, the basketball Ireland policy was a five-year policy. Um, I think it's a little bit long personally, um, so I would like to, um, I'm going to bring to the board to see about bringing that back down to a three-year policy um, from the start of 2021. Now that won't affect people that are currently already vetted for five years, it'll be for new members getting vetted or uh, re-vetted. And I think that ties in in line as well with the you know, with the information of the coaching licenses and the information we get and um, safeguarding certs um, and all that, which is generally around the three or four year 
um, Mark, for, for updating. Um, so just two, two, I think, essential materials in terms of safeguarding in children first are these two booklets here. The one on the left, the Children's First, was brought out in 2018, and um, the soft copy is up on the website. I have some hard um, copies left, probably about 20 in the office. Um, so, you know, if it's first come, first serve basis, if people want to get it, their hands on a copy of those, they can um, drop me an email um, to or wall at Basswell Ireland or at Safeguarding. But again, the soft for, uh, copy version is, is up there as well. And then the Sport of Ireland um, booklet is there, the Safeguarding Guidance for Children and Young People in Sport. Again, excellent, probably about 75 pages of really um, good information in there. Um, for you. Again, I have a soft copy of that and you can get it from obviously the Sport Ireland website. So again, get in touch um, if you want to get that off me. Um, so just a little bit more information there again, Sport Ireland, especially in terms of the safeguarding course. And I know it's been hard to um, obviously get uh, um, safeguarding face-to-face -face done, nearly impossible since lockdown one. Now, since the summer and lockdown two, um, a lot of the uh, local sports partnerships and the local councils are really getting up, um, getting their safeguarding uh, one, especially um, courses up online. Um, you can do twos and threes there now as well. You see, um, so your, your coaches and your team managers, you know, should really have the safeguarding one um, at a minimum, and the, um, the child protection officers have a minimum of the uh, safeguarding uh, two course done. Um, again, the online refresh course is very good. Um, it's only an hour and a half on Sport Ireland website. And you get a cert when you've completed that um, at the end. So there's the link for it there. Um, again, if you if you can't access it, just drop me an email and I can link you guys to it. It's okay. Yeah. If someone can uh, think it is on off mute, can you please mute yourself? Or I've muted you. For no problem. So, and um, yeah, so again, look, just look, you just need to look online. A certain amount of information regarding the safeguarding courses is on Sport Ireland, but it's just, it, it, there's new one comes in all the time. So just do a Google search, your local sports partnerships, um, councils. I know um, I, I did my uh, three through the FAI because they're really, um, did loads of courses. Um, so um, that's a, another good resource to check out as well. And Iniqua, especially for um, up north, um, Iniqua um, have a very good website as well, um, which I actually forgot to put in, but you can hit me up for that later. Um, I actually just come across it there this evening. And um, yeah, I think the coaches as well, it's obviously safeguarding one and um, yeah, CPOs just say safeguarding two at a minimum. Um, so just the resource and info, as Matt was saying, can be very hard to navigate uh, my website. So, most of my stuff in terms of the, um, the welfare, child protection and safeguarding and guard vetting is under the about section and it's just there under the welfare tab, it's just three in. So um, you should be able to find all the material. There's a lot of information up there and, you know, I keep adding all the time. Anytime there's new stuff comes through, um, I'll, I'll add it in. But of course, I'm always um, available for, for a question if you're, if you're unsure where stuff is. Um, so just a little quick thing on guard vetting again. So you must be registered and have an active uh, BI pin. Um, it's a legal requirement, but it's just there at the top. So that all staff paid and voluntary workers who work regularly with children and or vulnerable adults must undergo the guard vetting process. And there's, this draws on the National Vetting Bureau Children and Children Act in 2012, 2016. Um, obviously since February of 2017, it's a really um, quick process now online. Um, as opposed to maybe eight to 12 weeks for the paper trail, which was a really kind of arduous, uh, horrendous process now. It's, you know, we can have results back um, probably an average of two to four days. And of course that all depends on the, the applicant, how quickly they access the link that they get by email and, and doing, their, um, doing their part of the online process. Um, so if people, uh, if you want to get, like, I know you're, you're all generally involved in clubs, but, you know, some people who don't want to be involved, but we have a catch-all independent club. So if there are coaches or team managers or anyone like that, even referees, um, a lot of them are all getting guard lists, so we would um, put them into the catch-all, the independent club, get their bike in, and then they can um, apply for a guard vetting. As I said there earlier on, the guard vet policy is five years currently, and I'm going to have a look at reviewing that. So we get back a disclosure, which... Um, which is received to me, and then I generate a, um, a PDF letter from that um, based on the results I get back. And I always email it to the applicant um, by BCC, and then the individual, uh, the club CPO, 
um, as BCC'd on that same email. So I, I have a copy stored in a secret file, um, or a secure file um, for the duration of the, um, the guard vetting policy. Um, and then once that passes, I, sh I delete and shred everything. Um, so um, yeah, and that's generally really it on the guard vetting procedure. And um, yeah, I'll actually, that's quite quick enough, but um, I'll stop sharing now and I'll head back and we'll have your questions. Thanks very much for that, Rory. Um, so we already have a couple of questions come in here. I'll go to the, the chat first and take the questions there. And then at the end, I'll um, leave it open to people if they want to ask direct questions. So um, if when you are putting the questions in, if you could just let me know who you're directing at, at, at whether it's uh, Matt or Rory. So the first question is for you, Matt. And um, is there anywhere I can see how many CPT, CPT points I have? Um, currently not, no. Um, so as, as I said, uh, it, it's fairly new with CPD points, so we've been tracking them really more and more coming over the last year. Uh, we don't have yet some way of you being able to track them. It's more you would have to email them and, and you can, we'll tell you how many you've got. But what I would say is if you're unsure, you probably don't have any. Um, so you, most people are aware of anything they've been to that was sanctioned by BI. They'd have had to sign in when they went um, and probably signed out when they left, it would have been advertised having BI points to it. Um, and then those points would go up onto your, uh, up onto your personal history. And then, but if, if you want to find out how many you've got, you can give us a shout by email and we can let you know straight away. Perfect. Um, the next question I have is for you as well, Matt, is do BI run coaching courses Ran since 1997, qualify as Sport Ireland basketball coaching courses. Yeah, they do. So it's 97 is the cutoff because that's when Sport Ireland, which previously went under the name of Coaching Ireland, some sample still does, they changed the way the courses were set up and their database then. So that's the kind of watermark. So anything before 1997 is no longer valid. Anything from mid 1997 onwards should be on that database. Um, and they have the, the paperwork as well to track that back. Okay. Um, another one for you. Does this weapon hire carry CPD points and does safeguarding course qualify for CPD? This webinar does not. Um, safeguarding course doesn't currently, it's, you have to have, you have to have the safeguarding. It's one of the things that you have to have in order to, um, get a coach license so it doesn't it doesn't give you extra cpd points okay perfect um next question is for you rory does the safeguarding course on tusla website cover safeguarding yeah it does you know it's it's not exactly we are we try and obviously promote the sport ireland one um because you know it's sports specific specific but you know it, it's it's they are very closely linked in terms of content, especially when it comes to the, the safeguarding one content, which is very um, kind of broad, you know. So, yes, there's the answer to that. Perfect. Um, so if there's any other questions, you can go into the chat box. If you'd like to ask a question directly, you can put um, an emoji up like so on your um, screen, and I'll ask you to unmute yourself. If I don't call on you and you have put it up there and um, keep just putting it up because I have to scroll through two screens so I might miss it. If I don't get any questions in the next few minutes, I will stop recording and I will um, leave it on for another few uh, minutes if anyone wants to ask a question off the recording. Um, I have one more that comes in here and it is, uh, Matt, is there any possibility of having an online intro coaching course? Uh, something that's been discussed a lot by all the NGBs during this lockdown with Coach Nyland. So all our courses have to be sanctioned by them. It's not something they're in favour of. Um, in order to change a course, if you want to change more than 25% of a course, you have to go through a process of rewriting the entire course um, and then getting it sanctioned again and doing a test event and everything. So at, at the moment, the answer is no. We've looked at perhaps putting some of it online the classroom stuff, but even out of the eight hour introduction to coaching course, only an hour of that is uh, in a classroom setting. It's really a hands-on course that involves coaching. Um, we're looking at it, but at the moment, by the time we could actually 
find a course or get the course set up that we could do it online we would hope to back on the court and and it's it's not a direction that coach nine and really want to go they want people to be face to face learning to coach uh hands on um because that's what it's all about it's, it's not about learning basketball it's about actually being on and coaching each other perfect and another question for you here is what is the position if you do not have the cpd until you can do the follow-up courses what is the position if you do not have the CPD until you can do the follow-up courses? Oh, so basically, if you do the follow-up course, it supersedes it. So as long as you do the follow-up course with it before your license expires, you don't need any CPD points. So if your expire if your intro license expires after three years, uh, as long as you've completed the level one course before that expires. And it doesn't matter if you didn't complete any CPD. So the course itself is CPD and a lot more. So it's worth a lot more CPD points. So it, it supersedes that. If you wait till your license expires, you can't just then go on to the next course. You've got to renew your license by doing that CPD in the, within the two years. But if you did your CPD within the two years for your intro course, for example, then you could go on and do the level one course straight away after that. Brilliant. Um... So I'm going to stop the recording and then I'll uh, leave it for more people to ask some questions just for anybody, for yourselves and anybody watching this on social media, this uh, webinar is recorded and is stored on our Basketball Ireland website. If you go to Basketball Ireland and click the club mark section and um, you will see all the webinars there, all four of them. Also, if anyone is interested in applying for the club mark or find out any more information or want to get any more information about either um, this webinar or any of the other webinars, you can contact me at pcar, C-A-R-R, at basketballireland.ie um, and I can link you in with whoever, whoever you need to. So I'm going to stop recording.